Now of so many Hello. names, some of your ears. My gosh. Last, yeah. Last That's month. Really impressive. My gosh. Go. I love that lipstick, Amy. Mm. The little oh, Rosalinda. <laughs> do you miss me? I do. No. I do. A lot. Hello, everyone. I'm letting everybody in, but I'm looking at you back and forth and your cool glasses. Hi, France. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, Roy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> There's Madeline. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. All right. I got the recording on. Oh, I think I do. Oh, you do. Yes. Time to time to stop saying dumb things. No. Oh, nice top, Suzanne. Ooh. Ooh. It's indigo. The day of indigo. It's indigo. powerful fauna. Indigo day. Indigo day. Put on your indigo. Abu Bakar Fofana is here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're going to dance today. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Get ready. Limber up. Mm. I'm in a new yeah. place. So, hey. Yeah. Just make sure you have clearance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes Suzanne. There you go. Good, good. Good, Suzanne. Step dancers, you know, and they, they used to dance, I think it was in the kitchen. Some, are, some people are dancing, Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne is dancing. getting ready. You have yeah. to wait and hear the dancing song. Just, Just wait for the first time. There I am. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. All Hello. right, Amy. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, everybody has to mute themselves now. Well, yeah, go ahead and mute yourselves. I'll let people in. Okay. Let's like, okay. this is where I get nervous, Abu Bakar. Okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here I go. Okay. Well, it's the end of the week. Now where you been? Well now it's Feedback Friday, so come on in. Come sit down and stare at your screen. We've got a presenter that you never seen. We're Feedback Friday, we're on the loose. We'll be the train, you be the caboose. It's Feedback Friday with Kathy and Amy. Mashed potatoes and the gravy. It's Feedback Friday all day long. Feedback, Feedback, Feedback Friday. And good morning, everyone. How are you? Happy Friday. This is Feedback Friday from Botanical Colors, and we are on episode 49. Or, as we're saying it now, episode one of season two. Do you remember the cliffhanger from last week? The Sean Moore? I don't remember it. So anyway... <laughs> We didn't have one, but if we were a real TV show, we would have had one. There would have been some huge mystery that we were going to reveal over the course of this season. But we have something even better. We have Abu Bakar Fofana with us today. And um, before I get into talking about what, what our program is, I just wanted to say thank you very, very much for all thank of you your everyone. support. Yes, thank you. It has been a year. We're coming out of it. Um, it's still going to take some time, but we can we really can start seeing that, you know, the sun is going to rise here. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Kathy Hottori, president of Botanical Colors, and along with Amy Dufo, our director of sustainability and communications, we are so pleased to bring you our 49th episode of Feedback Friday. Um, I think I've said thank you many times, but I just have to say thank you so much uh, today. I have an appointment to get the first dose of my vaccine. I'm just beyond happy. Yeah, it's uh, I'm terrified and, and joyous at the same time. So um, I'll be doing that after Feedback Friday and looking forward to um, finishing that 
and being able to kind of be back in the world. Um, Amy, let's see. So let me just talk a little bit about our program in Abu Bakr, and then we'll go into a little bit of the housekeeping. Um, of course, many of you who have been part of Feedback Friday and Botanical Colors for the past few months, years, know that Abu Bakr has come to Seattle for three years to teach right across the street um, from our studio, and it's just been a blast. And we've done this um, until COVID. And so now, uh, last year, we did all of our presentations and workshops over Zoom. And then we'll be resuming that this year over Zoom. Um, but hopefully in 2022, we'll be able to go back to in-person workshops. And so we're really looking forward to that. For those of you who aren't familiar with Abu Bakr, um, Abu Bakr is joining us from Bamako, Mali. And um, he divides his time between France and Mali. And uh, since the COVID outbreak, he has been spending quite a bit of time in Mali and he's been working on his farm and doing his work. And he's going to be speaking with us about the farm, the indigo growing, a new cotton initiative that he's working on um, and all sorts of really amazing things as well as the Zoom workshops that he's going to be uh, conducting this spring and summer. Um, the other thing that he, I hope he'll talk about, I hope you'll talk about Abu Bakar is the purchase of your farmhouse studio in uh, France. And um, that will be really interesting to hear about that too. Um, as far as the call, Amy's our, Amy is our moderator and she'll be monitoring the chat. So once uh, Abu Bakar is completed with his presentation, we'll be going um, to chat questions and she'll be asking Abu Bakar. At the end of the Q&A, uh, we go into something called picture of the week. Week, 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 week. We're gonna get that reverb soon, I swear promise you. Um, and we'll talk about a, a picture of a standout um, artist or, or dyer who is being who's using natural dyes in their work and what's so impressive about that. Uh, the call's being recorded and we'll have a video copy ready for you at the end of the week, along with any additional information um, resulting from this call. So that's kind of all that we're going to talk about. And Abu Bakar, I'd like to turn it over to you and welcome to Feedback Friday. We're so pleased to have you again. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone, for being uh, here. Uh, I am always impressed, you know, to, to be facing you. And, uh, and I'm really glad that I can share this uh, time with you all. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So today, again, um, we are going to, or I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things I feel concerned in my uh, practice as a visual artist or textile designer. And because um, all the medium, all the material I'm using are sourced from the natural world, you know, natural dyes, natural fibers. And, um, and of course, in also all the projects I'm uh, leading in Mali is also something in commune with um, a community I'm working with, uh, both the studio and the farm as well, you know, because uh, everything starts from uh, the farm, if I can say, in uh, coming to talk about uh, indigo, for example, uh, even the, the farming of the cotton. And uh, I'm not the one doing that farming, of course, but it's still farming, it's still uh, about uh, agriculture, is uh, really from all this um, agriculture aspect to the finished products. Of course, I will also, I would love to share some of the picture, some picture with you from my, uh, my work my process and that's very important and but i always want to honor all all those people you cannot see here you know because uh, everything i uh, i make is because of all those people who 
are supporting me in my, um, you know, what can I say, in my daily existence, you know, working in the studio or at the farm to make, uh, to grow all these uh, plants, no matter it's, uh, you know, the reforestation with the local essence of trees, with uh, medicinal plants and dye plants. And uh, yeah, so I really want to thank them all and uh, to be part of my, my life and uh, yeah, my, uh, and, and making uh, happen all that I'm doing. And uh, just a few words for them. And um, yes, if I can maybe start by talking about the cotton. Cotton in this place or in this country, Mali, West Africa, uh, is uh, one of our, uh, how do you say, a king, king, or we even call it the, the white gold. That's how we call uh, cotton here in Mali, white gold, because also we are a very uh, big uh, ex uh, exporter to, of, of cotton. We export a lot of cotton. Maybe not this year, but uh, Mali used to be first uh, cotton producer in all African continents. And uh, when I come to that, I'm always, I always feel, uh, how can I say, not frustrated, but um, sad because uh, in this country, as a, a, a first producer of cotton, we maybe transform like 1% of this cotton, no, the conventional cotton. And I feel really sad about that because uh, all those uh, industry we need, uh, like for weaving and spinning, no matter it's uh, industrial or tradition in a traditional way, in, uh, in we, our rulers the, doesn't have the, the vision, what I call the vision, the vision of uh, transforming this white gold, this precious uh, material into something we would say finished product and also to keep the value added in the country and giving work to, to people, to the young generation. And as you know, we have also all these uh, problem, issues with the uh, migration of uh, this young population in Europe and trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea and most of them uh, being swallowed by the, by the sea. It's happened, I don't know how many, over you know, 5,000 or even more deaths per year, people, the young generation trying to cross the Mediterranean to go to Europe. So at my level, I'm transforming a very little because it's, uh, it's a drop even it's a drop, but it's uh, very important. And I have to say, I feel really proud about uh, this drop I'm transforming from my side, you know, to to yeah to make ex to yeah to make exist some uh, some uh, products uh, in terms of uh, you know fashion accessories, or homewares, or even. Uh, installation, the body of my artwork as a visual artist. And uh, yeah, this is something I really want to, to be able to continue in the future for uh, this place, for this country. For... And uh, of course, I'm working with uh, villages and um, Dogon country with uh, a group of women who are working on uh, transforming and spinning this cotton. So maybe I should start sharing some, uh, some visual, some, um, some pictures, and, uh, and then we can uh, continue the conversation. Uh, let me see if I say like this, share screen. Is that uh, working? Can you see? Yes. Looks good. Yes. That's not the one I wanted. I'm coming back. Sorry. Mm. 
this is not the one I want. So, okay, that's the one I want. Okay. Okay, so this is the, this is the cotton plant. I think everybody know about the, the, this um, beautiful uh, material. And of course, in, in uh, Africa, we have also some uh, species who are indigenous to, to, to this place. And uh, from what I remember, uh, when I was uh, young, I remember what we used to call the cotton tree. It was really a tree. It's nothing to do with uh, what I'm, I'm used to cotton plant now, like it's very short and you can very easily pick the fiber. But uh, from my childhood, I have this uh, in the mind of what we really call the cotton trees. And uh, some of them was much taller than me, you know, I'm, uh, I'm quite tall, but, uh, and, but I remember those uh, cotton, cotton trees who was much taller than myself is like uh, over two meters, uh, I'm, I'm less than two meters for sure, but uh, over two meters, two meters 50. And uh, I definitely remember that. And um, so we have, um, oh, I'm trying to, Go to the next picture. Sorry. Uh, okay, maybe like this. Yeah. yeah. So, and we have also those um, indigenous uh, brown cotton, but both the the white and this indigenous one are very uh, short staple. Okay, and those are short staple suits more for hand weaving or hand 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 spinning. Sorry, I want to say. And spinning, and the tradition here in Mali, we use a um, uh, drop spindle. Is that the correct name in English? Drop spindle, and uh, of course, the, the the those people are most most of them are elderly person who have the skill of uh, still uh, spinning with um, those specific tools. And here you can see this uh, metallic, um, how do you say, stilet they use to take off the cotton seed to separate the seed from the fiber and then work on the carding. Of course, everything is uh, hand, handmade, you know, from uh, the carding to the, let's see. You can see the, the, the card we use now to, to make the fiber smooth before we start, they start the, the spinning of this cotton itself. And I was saying that this is a short fiber, short staple. And uh, here you can see this uh, drop spindle and uh, you can imagine how time consuming and labor intensive for everybody who's from the textile uh, world or textile field to, to think that uh, a woman cannot even spin one kilo of fiber per month. So this is um, the reason I have to be very patient with um, all my, uh, those ladies, and I'm not asking them a specific quantity. I'm just working now for many years by sending the raw cotton to the village and for those women to just process the cotton in, um, in, in, a, in a threads, in bobbins, like here you can see. And uh, once a year, if I'm really lucky, it could be maybe twice a year, I will collect from them all this beautiful work, as you see here. And, um, and from that, I will share this bobbin most of the time with the weavers. And I will process uh, some in my studio in skein like this for the dyeing. And because uh, uh, after the, 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 
this process of uh, spinning, we have to work on the on the weaving and the weavers I'm working with. And some of them are just doing the plain organic, uh, I mean, the plain um, white fabric, uh, the finimugu, if we can call it like that, that uh, the organic material, the raw cotton in, in, in the bands. And for the, the skein I can dye myself, I will share with the weavers in this uh, very specific uh, loom with the horizontal loom. Uh, it's very specific from uh, West Africa, West African loom. And this is more a male loom. And when you come for female loom, it will be a vertical loom. So, but uh, the horizontal loom is more masculine you know, loom. And uh, so I will share those uh, dyed skein with the weavers. And of course, I will give them the bobbin for the, for the plain weaving with uh, the finimu. This, uh, and uh, some of those loom can uh, weave over 100 meter of length, you know, and they can, they can uh, prepare a very long warp and uh, during weeks, just uh, weaving those warp and uh, keep the roll sometimes. So having over a hundred meter roll. And of course, those roll of uh, finimugu, of raw material are the precious uh, support for our studio and uh, for myself as a, a textile designer and a, a visual artist, of course, because one of my uh, concern is uh, how we can uh, sustain those indigenous culture, you know? And it's very important that uh, this indigenous culture still exists even with, uh, we have a uh, technology and if even we have factory to spin uh, cotton and weave uh, with machine. But uh, my really concern is uh, you know, keeping this, those traditional life. And it's become more and more rare to find this uh, raw material, you know, because of all the generation who are doing the hand spinning are elders. And uh, if we don't do something like uh, quickly, soon we may, you know, this material may disappear in a few years. So I hope that will never happen, of course. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and that's what I wanted to share about so the, the cotton. And this is really the work I'm doing as a cottage industry and uh, with all this, uh, those community of uh, spinners and weavers and uh, trying also to find the market for them uh, not only, of course, with the raw material, who I'm happy, you know, to sometimes uh, share with uh, people I'm collaborating with, but still, I think that is, is important for me to transform uh, this raw material into finish um, into finished products, and uh, those finished products have. Uh, different, uh, how can I say, different form. Uh, of course, we are gathering them in the studio and the process into, uh, process into fashion accessories. Uh, can, can you see the screen? Uh, yeah. Yes. Into fashion accessories. Yeah, we can see this. Okay, thank you. Fashion accessories and um, you know, uh, homewares, and uh, and also some uh, instrument or, ins or more or my artwork. And uh, of course, it's uh, still again kind of time consuming by gathering those bands and uh, to get uh, larger panels from you know, gathering those bands. And uh, no matter if it's fashion accessories or homeware, you know, you can gather as much band as you want to do very large panel. 
and uh, that's uh, very interesting with this material. And uh, tra traditionally, of course, we had uh, a kind of a science of using those bands because uh, depending if you are, you know, sewing garments, uh, and uh, if the garment is for a child or, or an adult or, or an elder, you will be allowed of a certain number of uh, of bands and uh, to make your garments or or even if uh, someone uh, passed away and uh, we have to gather bands uh, if you know if it's, it's happened suddenly we can uh, uh, gather bands uh, to to prepare the shroud of the the dead body or uh, many of the elders as well will uh, in advance uh, work on their shrouds because uh, as we said that uh, life and death is linked this duality is um, very um, important in that tradition that uh, we all know that we are we will one day it will be the end and uh, saying that everything we live will die and the uh, elders most of the time you know live in their house with uh, their ready shroud and uh, the, the, the children, the wife, everybody know that this is this person, so shroud, and not any time it happened. So we will be ready to, to what can I say, uh, to follow, I mean, to wrap the body for the other world. And of course, it could be also for some people, very elaborate uh, shroud, you know, woven and uh, with a beautiful design. But most of the time, indigo is uh, one of the one of the color on the medium who would be used for that shroud, because we, in the symbolic of the blue, you know, indigo is a celestial color, and uh, is a is a color of protection, and uh, the color of also the color we use to heal our body. And our spirit, but it's the color of of, uh, of protection, and uh, that will always, I would say, help uh, the dead body to to pass uh, on the path of to the other world. Mm. So, yeah, the 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 fini the fini mugu is really present in my uh, very present in my. Uh, so this is sorry, this is a, a collaboration work with. Uh, Someone else with Indigo, yes. The, the Finimugu is always uh, very present in my, uh, in my practice, in my, uh, yeah, in, in, in my uh, process and in my work, because I really want to give um, this attention, this specific attention to this uh, raw material. And as I was saying, to, to be able to keep the value added in, in, in the place. And um, yes, yeah, sorry, something else I can continue sharing. Uh, this. Okay. Yes, because of course, uh, you know, this material is uh, so amazing and it's used, it's used so all the different technique, no matter it's, uh, you use uh, in terms of stitch resist, uh, tie resist. And for many years, I've been really, really designing with this, uh, this raw material. And it, it's really a living material because I'm still learning by uh, working with this material. And, uh, and when the fiber is really well prepared, like well scarred, it has a, a very, uh, an incredible character and is taking the dye really amazingly, really the dye incredibly. And um, it's really, really fascinating to me to work with this, uh, this material, you know. Yeah. 
And I like also mixing all this, uh, I see very graphic design together, you know, to create this such, uh, such um, very graphic um, situation or, or mess, graphic mess, I, I can say so. Uh, and for some of you, last year we, we did the practice some of this technique together as well. This uh, stitch resist uh, technique was very specific to West Africa, to Mali, I would say. And something uh, I've been uh, developing for those last 25 years. And uh, with the, also the skill of these uh, women who are the, the most skillful people in, in, uh, in this uh, stitch resist technique. Um, I am personally very, very slow in that, but uh, they have a really amazing skill. Okay, just uh, pictures to share, you know, you know, Finimugu in all its states, you know, Finimugu in all this different language, as I, will, I, I can say, and uh, this is a, a door hanging. Uh, what else? No, in in the plain, in the plain colors, and you can see also those. Uh, uh, what can I say? This how vibrant in certain way the texture come with. No, not special uniform always, but uh, with this specific character. And uh, I think I really even prefer the plain colors. Because when you get to just dye a plain color in a beautiful shade, I think it's just that's the most beautiful thing ever. Of course, I'm sensitive to 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 all those graphic aspects, and um, and I think that this finimugu in its justice in its raw state as an off-white fiber, I think is just amazing, just like this, you know is even no color when it's uh, a very beautiful weaving, a plain weaving. And uh, it's, it's just uh, something who always remain vibrant, you know, even with no, no color to it. And um, I think there is some close up here and you can see those, those texture in plain colors, how amazing they are. You know, it's like uh, the fiber is living, you know, it's a living fiber and you can see the inside uh, of, uh, you know, and you, any piece you make is always, uh, you will have the uniqueness of the piece, you know, it's always one of kind because you know, depending who did the, the spinning and who did the weaving, you will never ever find two roll of finimu exactly the same, you know? And they all have their own uh, DNA, if I can say so, you know, their own uh, specific character, you know? And this is uh, one of the reasons I am always fascinated by this raw material. Okay, so that's um, the, the, the Finimugu in the whole state. And something else I wanted to share, if I find it. No, maybe it's not this anymore, sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find them. what I'm looking for exactly. It's not this. No, sorry. <laughs>
Yeah, sorry for this technical. Those are video. It's not what I'm looking for. Uh, I want to share something very different. Okay, let me see where is this. Um, No. Abu Bakr, I would, I would uh, just maybe yeah. stop the share and then try it yeah. again with the screen okay. that you. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I, I have uh, so many things to show and uh, I really wanted to share this, I uh, mean, some more of, uh, of, uh, some more work with you and uh, maybe i can i can go in uh, sharing some of the video uh, on some of those uh, my work more related to to installation and and um app work uh, but i will get there i just need uh, sorry to find this uh, Sometimes I have problem with the technical aspect. Uh, uh, okay, so I think is this one if I succeed to show it because of yeah that was more the what I could say about uh, about um, the cotton and uh, maybe I should. Uh, Say a few things about um, about the, the indigo itself, and um, let's come to that to share this screen with you. And uh, yes, okay. So, in terms of uh, okay, as you know, of course, this is also one of my. Uh, concern indigo and the, in mali here in, in in the indigo farm in our farm i'm growing two different species and uh, this one was indigenous to west africa uh, indigo ferra arecta who's the same family than all the indigo ferra family uh, the indigo ferra Sufruticosa, Australis, uh, Tinctoria, and all that family of indigo. It is uh, an amazing plant as well for giving beautiful, beautiful uh, blue. And another one called the Philoneptera sienescent. And you can see the Philoneptera sienescent is a very different leaves from uh, the Indigofera family. And it's another amazing uh, native indigo from Africa. Those are the two species I'm growing in the farm here in Mali. And with this one who have this uh, specific, uh, uh, also very high indigo tin content. And uh, this is the plant when I was young, I was child, and I, I discovered about indigo. That was the plant I've seen, the first plant I've seen as a indigo plant, but uh, not as dye plant, but as medicinal plant. And we still use this in the traditional medicine here. It had the bigger leaves and it has also an amazing indigo tin content. And the way we process that plant, we harvest the leaves like we will do with the, with the indigo ferra leaves. And then we pound, you know, we, we pound those leaves in a large uh, wooden motor, a peso. And uh, this is the way we process uh, then to make uh, the indigo balls. We will use them for the fermentation vats. You see, so from these very green leaves, you know, after being pounded and uh, the sap oxidized, and uh, you can see right away. You know, all those balls will come blue. And uh, 
And then we dry those balls and store them for the future use of uh, making that the dried balls. And that's with those balls we use them for the, to set our fermentation or indigo vat. And of course, everybody knows that, that uh, this is a studio in Bamako, that uh, indigo is not only the midnight dark blue, and that's it's the richest, the, the riches of indigo is just uh, something amazing. And um, all those shades could be achieved from uh, an indigo vat. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to go ahead, yeah. And of course, I always like showing and talking about um, this, uh, those 12 different shades uh, from the blue of nothingness uh, to the one we call the Le Massa Duné, like a profound divine sky. And you can see all this variation all that can be achieved in an indigo vat. And uh, because I'm also always saying that uh, the skill of an, in, an indigo dyer is not just, uh, and when we come to fermentation dye, fermentation vat is not just uh, succeeding a, a good, uh, healthy indigo vat to start with, but uh, the observation in the daily time to be aware or to be, to know the needs of um, the bacteria because of growing, I mean, setting an indigo vat is growing bacteria and those living organism uh, need attention. And uh, it means that you also, of course, have to be faithful to be able to, to have, uh, uh, to keep those uh, those living organism or healthy healthy because uh, if you only if you give them what they need and then they will give you also your expectation their beauty but uh, no that will work if you you don't take care about uh, those living organism and if this is the the key of uh, of, uh, how can I say, handling and uh, balancing every single day, you know, the, the VAT you know, and all those parameters you need. I mean, uh, of course, to be sure that the fermentation is going, that the alkali in the VAT is, uh, the pH is the right one. And uh, also, you know, uh, when you over dye, you can create harm to the bacteria. I mean, so, so many, so many things. And yeah, we are talking about them as uh, really living beings and very tiny living beings we cannot see with our own eye, but uh, we have uh, always faith to them that uh, they live in the liquid. You know, we are handling with love every single day, you know. Of course, those are some pictures who have never been published. I'm sharing that with you today because uh, they were, were part of an uh, uh, exhibition catalog. And uh, as you know, for those who know my work, I really love this interaction with nature always. And I don't think that uh, an artwork should be always in a white cube in the, in, in, in the gallery. And I think uh, that interaction of uh, the body of artwork being outside in the nature and being seen like that is something really interesting because I do believe also in uh, the impermanent aspect of, uh, I would say, those uh, installation, you know, the way I want my work to be seen. And uh, no matter the, the theme I'm working on, because I'm, I'm you know, for example, this, uh, this picture here illustrates uh, something uh, very, very dark in, um, 
you know, American history is, uh, you know, this beautiful song has been sung by many artists like uh, Billy Holiday or Nina Simone, you know, called, uh, titled uh, Strange Fruit. Strange Fruit is uh, the lynching of uh, African American, you know, when people will dress with their most beautiful suits to go and uh, and watch those uh, those uh, I don't know how we can call that is so horrible. Those uh, scenes of uh, lynching human being, killing other human being, and being a spectacle show. I mean, anyway, this is of course I want to you know. It's important for me always to talk about all this aspect when I come to Indigo to say, to talk about this dark side of uh, something we think it's uh, very fashionable or trendy sometimes that uh, as, a, as a human, I would say, not only as an African, but as an African, that this is something, something I always uh, will keep, I have to keep in mind, you know, that it's been uh, use uh, as a symbol of uh, oppression. And indigo is also that, and we, we don't have to forget that. So that was a kind of installation. The, those are boats, you know, symbolizing, you know, the crossing of the Mediterranean by uh, all these uh, generation, these young people trying to migrate in Europe uh, and uh, being swallowed by the sea, as I was saying at the beginning. So. Of course, indigo have its place in uh, interior design, you know, in, in, in this mosquito net tent. One of the installations titled uh, Blue Trees, Les Arbres Bleus, this metaphor saying that indigo is from a vegetable origin, not from a mineral origin, like we in Europe we thought for a long, long time because it was coming to on this uh, solid form of uh, indigo cake from India or, or from the other colon colonies. And people thought that indigo was from them. Yeah, so I think um, indigo suits always in uh, land art on the outside and all is minerals, no matter it's rock or it's a golden grass or if it's sands. And um, I really, loves my work being seen in the natural environment. Yeah, another body of work called Uprising, talking about uh, this uh, exploitation of human beings by human beings. And, uh, I think I have to go quickly because of um, the time and you must have also a lot of questions for me. Yeah, you know, Kadua Parafinae, Africa blessing with uh, living animals, living sheep. One of the most, uh, my most controversial work I've, uh, I have I've ever, <laughs> ever did you know, working with living beings, with uh, living animals, but with respect, of course, without harming them, for sure. But it's been, um, how can I say, not well received by some people who think that uh, we should not use animal in art. But at the same time, if art doesn't cross boundaries, what else can cross boundaries? But what I have to say for any any animal lover, I've been very respectful to those animals and I did not uh, harm them at all. As you know, myself, I have my hand uh, in my indigo vat. And uh, so, and uh, the controversy is always interesting, I would say, but uh, when controversy come to violence, it becomes something else anyway. So, And uh, before, before it was the African sheep, and you can see the African sheep have less wool, as you can you can see. And when I did this body of artwork, this installation, it was in uh, Athens in Greece, and the uh, Athens University of uh, Agriculture 
uh, did provide the 54 ship, 54 for Africa blessing because it's uh, one ship per country in Africa. And those 54 ship, uh, you know, and I had to work on and to collaborate with those 54 ship in Athens. And you can see, obviously, they have more wood, you know. And the interest was, of course, uh, dying 54 ship and uh, not have uh, twice the same, the same, uh, I would say, design. I don't know if uh, I can say that because, uh, you know, as human, we all have our own DNA and the same for the animals and the, even the plants. And uh, that was really, really challenging. Working with uh, collaborating with those living beings for this uh, Africa Blessing project. I have to say at the end of those uh, two months, I, uh, I am the one who've been blessed by this, those animals because I learned a lot by, uh, in this collaboration. Yeah, so of course, another way of using uh, this medium, indigo, this substance, indigo, who, for me, I'm always trying to see that substance beyond the, his blueness, but uh, is also the substance we can create the most beautiful uh, shade of blue. And uh, Cathy and Amy, I don't know where we are this time, and uh, I'm happy to share even one video, or that uh, I can imagine that there is a lot of questions, and uh, maybe it's time to go for the to take the question, what do you think? What do you think, Kathy? You know, I'm always so fascinated with everything that you share with us, Abu Bakr. I could listen to you for another hour easily. Um, but shall we open it for questions in the chat? Yeah. And thank you, Abu Bakr. That was super yeah, I mean, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your attention. And thank you also for the, your interest to my work. I have to say thank you, everyone. Yeah. yeah. It, wow. I hadn't seen those other pictures of the sheep before. And I hadn't seen the pictures of the pieces that you had, the strange fruit yeah. um, one. And the, the, um, those were amazing. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um... Let's get some, let's just get a couple questions here. Wow, there's they're coming in very fast. Um, okay. So, what is your background and training as an artist? Is the question. Mm -hmm. My background is a uh, is a uh, life. Uh, I mean, my my field of learning is a uh, you know you know. I have never, I've never, I never done any art school. I've never been to any uh, design or art school. And I had interest uh, to that uh, because, you know, in, 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 in sharing life. And also I have to say, I'm a grandson of uh, a wonderful uh, woman, um, her, uh, so the rest in peace. I am a grandson of uh, an herbalist. And uh, I think the passion I developed with, uh, with plant uh, come probably from her. And because uh, we will be commissioned by this grandmother to collect different plants and uh, I think my fascination came the day I heard that that plant who we were collecting as an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory to bring to my grandmother, that that plant also could produce color. And can you imagine for the seven years old child when we, we crush that leaves and then, you know, the hand right away become blue and how from green leaves you can make blue and I think that was the seeding in my mind. And uh, that was also, you know, the, where my passion started from uh, this uh, 
you know, using plants. I think I was very sensitive to all the therapeutic aspects of plants, of course, but knowing that sometime from, for some ceremony, we had to collect some tree bark or bring some more roots to make colors for to dye the, the tunics or even to dye also the tunics for the grand, my grandmother using the tunic as a, as a therapeutic support because we do believe in this tradition that uh, you know when you wear you know an indigo dye garment on your skin or any other uh, dye plant because uh, all those all those plants who give colors are also they are all medicinal plants because the fiber as we said are the skin skin of human and the the and the, the what can I say we use to make it short we use the, the garment as bandage in our culture, you know? And uh, this is something very, very important. And I think, yes, my fascination came from the fact that in this natural world, we could, uh, we could, uh, we could create colors as well, you know? And I think I was much more sensitive in this uh, visual aspect of plant giving color maybe than the therapeutic aspect, even both, both go together. And I think this is my, my trainee by, um, by uh, you know, having a passion and then taking that passion to another level and, uh, and then to, to be in that state now where passion, passion come, uh, you know, when passion is, is, uh, is pushed at, it becomes something, uh, is to excess, you become a craziness, you know, I'm more in that in the craziness of, of this passion, you know, I will always say that uh, I'm uh, an indigo addict, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, but uh, I, I have never, I'm self-taught, I never did any design school or art school, and also we can go in uh, some definition of uh, what's art, you know, depending if it's in the western canon of art or in the uh, in uh, the way we think art is in, in uh, where we think in Africa, I mean, with this, uh, with this, uh, yeah, I mean, with the, the Africanness, uh, if, if I can say, if I think with that notion of uh, Africanness. Yes. I don't know if I replied to that question, but uh, yeah, no art school, no design school. No, My school is, uh, is life, is, uh, I mean, the, you know, I've learned on, on uh, existing with other human beings. Mm -hmm. The best way to learn. Um, you know, Kathy, it's 1258, and I just feel like that was just a great, kind of maybe a way for it to wrap up things with Abu Bakr, just talking about his inspiration and uh, Indigo, and uh, instead of diving into an, another question, but what do you think, Kathy? Should I ask one more question? I'm happy to one take one more question, and then we'll do picture of the week. I think we can run a little bit longer today. Yeah, I'm yep. happy. Thank to you. Well, go I'm gonna bundle, I'm gonna bundle a couple questions. There's a couple people are wondering about how you dyed the sheep, and then also, did you what did you do with the wool after? Did you do anything with that dyed wool? Okay, so how did I dye the sheep? You know, this is a, a very good question. As you know, the indigo technique is a, a vat dye. And when we say vat dye, it means, it means that you will react with oxygen you know, to, to give the, the blue. It's not uh, anything like uh, I could just take a, a brush and put in my indigo vat and paint the, the sheep. No, I really, really had to bath the sheep in the, in the 350 large indigo indigo vat I made for this project. I had uh, three big uh, uh, indigo vat for 350 liter. And uh, of course, because I was in Athens, I could not use uh, the fermentation vats like uh, if I was in Mali. Uh, my first collaboration with the ship, with the Malian ship, I did dye them in my vat, uh, with the fermentation vats here in Mali, in my studio. But the one in Athens, I had to set um, a, a, a re reduction vats. And uh, I, I did the three different concentrations. 
uh, five grams per liter and uh, seven or eight grams per liter and 12 grams per liter. And with those three vats, it took me two months to dye those uh, sheep. And I spent much more time uh, washing those sheep like a shampoo, really shampoo with a very mild soap. And the, the bath was also at uh, 35 degrees because the thing was to not stress those animals, you know? And I was, I was washing them in, um, you know, the temperature for, for a baby bath, you know? And uh, it was a super comfort, I have to say. And uh, I spent much more time by shampooing those, uh, those animals to remove all the grease. If not, they will uh, act as a resist to the dye. And the dyeing process itself was quite, uh, I won't say easy because I had a kind of a dream team with uh, three very strong guys and myself who could lift them and uh, hold them and uh, just uh, put the, the part of the body we wanted to dye to make uh, 54 different sheep. Of course, as you can see, I never put any head, any sheep head in, in the vat, of course. But you know, and uh, there is no other way than the bathing the 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 animal in the indigo bath, uh, indigo uh, bath dye or, or vat. The thing is, I think I would have been really disrespectful for this project, who was about uh, movement, migration, you know, life, because uh, migration is a proper of a human being. I would have been very disrespectful if I did use the dead sheep skin to do that project. I really wanted a living, a living beings to know to be. And because for me, it was of course obvious because what I was looking for in the concept of my work, everything was there because I'm doing the parallel between the human movement and the flock of sheep. And knowing that the blessing aspect notion is a, Indigo is used as a color of protection. So those, uh, those beings have to be blessed before their migration. And that's that blessing, why the blessing? Because the blessing come to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, I remember as a young child, as a, a shepherd as well, because that was the responsibility of the kids, that if you take the animal to feed them in the, in the bush, you have to be very careful for them to not eat people's crop. And because at, at that time we had uh, we had uh, space, you know, it was not like nowadays that everything is fenced and you have to, you know, even the shepherd cannot take their animal where they want anymore. For me, the parallel was important to say through this body of artwork that uh, this is an unfair situation between the, the dominant culture and the Western and Western uh, or the colonial power in Africa, because any French person who want to come to Africa to go and do safari or to go to see the Dogon country in Mali or the Niger River, he doesn't have any problem to get a visa to come and, 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 and go wherever that person wants to go. But in the other way, Africans don't have the legitimacy and the freedom to go where they want to go. And uh, Africa Blessing, this body of artwork is, uh, is talking more about that. And uh, it's not about blue sheep, it's about uh, something much deeper, much profound for me. That's uh, what um, uh, I, I feel very privileged here in Mali because uh, I grew up in France. I can go back and forth. But even when I'm training uh, some student here, art student, and they want to go and uh, and visit the uh, Musée du Louvre in France. I mean, they, well, you know, for which reason they're asking even for a visa to go to France because you know they don't have any legitimacy to to get out from this place and go to to go to to France. And that's why those all these generations who are taking the the, the ground ro ro road to go to Europe by crossing illegally the Mediterranean Sea. And this is a tragedy uh, I'm talking about through this body of artwork, Africa Blessing. 
I don't know if that was the I reply at the question. There was something else in that question. Um, how I did dye the sheep, and then what else? Um, did you use the wool for anything? Were you able to use the wool, or did it just stay on the sheep? Well, and and the, yes, I, the, for this body of artwork for documenta, I um, I had the previous budget because the 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 final the the sheep been dyed. And they did stay for the old uh, documenta exhibition, hundred days in a very beautiful orchard or under olive trees in uh, at an uh, university of agriculture. At the end of those the three months, we did shear them because the final body of artwork was just using those wool to spin the wools and and to weave them to make uh, a kind of uh, how can I say rug who was supposed to be a part of the Benaki Museum collection. But because of Documenta this year had a bankruptcy, the budget allocated to this work been taken back. But I still have the wool of this 54 sheep in my studio, uh, in my storage in France, 54 fleece of sheep of all those sheep. I still have them and I hope one day I will have uh, the financial uh, support or the power to to do that body of artwork. Thank you. That if that was the question. Thanks, Abu Bakr. Yeah, my pleasure. I think that was amazing, Abu Bakr. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Betty. Every time we talk, we have this conversation. There's more, more information, more exchange. It's really wonderful, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just close. And we've, I'm sorry we weren't, didn't have time to take more questions, but um, definitely. I'm talking about too much, I think. I'm talking no, this is just so fascinating. I, there yeah, are a few questions about like, it, you know, is this fabric available for sale? And I have it right here behind me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're very rich in Fini Mugu. So Abu Bakar sent us many uh, roles. And so it's it's here, it's on the site. Um, Amy can help uh, point you towards that uh, product. And then also Abu Bakar has his workshops open um, for registration. And we are offering both installment payments as well as scholarships. So don't be shy, we can figure out a way um, so that you can learn from Abu Bakr and, and uh, really, really just begin to start to understand like what's going on with indigo and, and, and indigenous fabrics from West Africa. Um, all of the workshops that we're teaching this year are going to use Finimugu. So if you've been interested in trying, to, trying it out, uh, it will be available as well in the workshop. Um, also, this, this month is Earth Month, so Amy put together an amazing blog about 10 different ways that you could participate in thinking about carbon drawdown as well as saving water or reusing water or reusing just ways that you can, as a natural dyer and artist, that you could be very active in this space. Um, and we also, those of you who have been interested in Natalie Stopka and her work. She's agreed to teach a workshop for us. So we'll be posting that soon. Um, and that will be on making lake pigments, another way to reuse your art supplies so that you can get uh, more life out of them. And uh, for next week, just to announce that we're going to have Cara Marie Piazza, one of our favorite um, natural dye priestesses from <laughs> Brooklyn, who is just doing amazing work. And she's going to be speaking about um, something called ice dying. So that's exciting. And um, now we're going to go into Amy's discussion about picture of the week. Week, week, week. We will get that reverb. We will. Okay, let's see. Is Alex? Alex, are you here? Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yes, hold on. Let me just share our picture of the week. Week, week. 
Yeah. So what is going on here? I, I saw that on Instagram. And I said, what is going on? And, and then I realized how beautiful all of the, you know, Oops. looks like I just got a call to get a vaccine, but I'll call them back on that. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> Alex, why don't you talk about these, uh, the shares that you have here? Yes, yes. So these are some ladder back chairs. They're based off of a traditional Appalachian chair. And I made them in collaboration with my friend, Eric Cannizzaro. He is a chair maker out of Tennessee. Um, yeah, and so it's all green woodworking. It came from an oak log and he carved it down. And I started out by dyeing 600 yards of cotton shaker tape with natural dyes. I, I dyed 12, 12 total. There they all are, yeah. Um, and I used six different dyes in the process with various modifiers to get all these different colors. Um, yeah, there's cochineal, indigo, weld, Osage, madder, and black walnut. So, oh, beautiful. Love it. I want to go back so can, everybody can look at that. That's so good. These are so beautiful. Yeah, I sent it to Kathy. I was like, what do you think? And she's like, chairs. And she, <laughs> yes. They're very musical. So, yeah. And well, there's going to be more, which is really exciting. All right. Well, look here. It says Foster Fiber. So follow Alex at Foster Fiber to see what's going on with these chairs and the dyeing. And thanks so much for just putting up a cool picture that we loved. Yeah, yeah, it's very fun. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, Abu Bakar. That this was an amazing talk. Was so thank you, Alex. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful chairs. Beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, so um, we're going to say goodbye, everyone. You can go ahead and unmute. Abu Bakar, so great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Happy and, to see you all. And uh, thank you for joining us this Bye. holiday weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Betty. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Sal. Thank you. Very much enjoyed hi, it. Thank Jennifer. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Hello. Goodbye. Oh, hi, Kate. Bye. Goodbye. Happy Bye. Happy. Bye. Happy. Happy. Hello, good, everyone. Thank hello. You. Hello. Bye. Bye. Happy vaccination, Bye. everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well oh, said, nice. Bye. Nice. <laughs> Abubakar, you see Bye. all your students here? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So, nice. you know? yeah, so many everyone. names and beautiful names. And uh, yeah, thank you. All, yeah, so all good to see everyone. Back. Yes, I'm so happy that I can reconnect <laughs> with you again. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Buddy. Amy, it was great. Good job. Thank you, Abu Bakar. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh, right, there's Brees Honeycutt. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank Where you. Where are you, Brees? Hi, Hi Betsy. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi, I'm I'm not so Thank afraid. You. I'm just, I think it's just the emotion of like it is finally yeah. getting to there. Hello, Diane. Yeah. It's a very, it, it's very, high, it's um, very high. Um, Leslie, Leslie, hello, oh hello, oh hello, oh hello, oh hello, 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 hey, <laughs> wow, Elena, <laughs> Sal, cannot see you, but I can see you, Kerstin. Yeah, amazing, Wonderful. absolutely hello, Sal. amazing. How are you? Lovely ah, to see you, Ah, there's Sal. Kristen, hi, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah, I can oh, see wow. Sal. Oh, wow. Hey, Sal. Fingers. Nice job. <laughs> Lovely to see that. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, good. That's great, good Sal. That's great. Remember when we were at Haystack and we all had just blue hands? And blue hands, yeah. Nobody at Haystack thought we were had a disease or something. Mm -hmm. but, but no, we were just the cool girls with the blue hands. Yeah. I can see that. All right. <laughs>
All right, Amy, I am going to make you the host. Okay, you want to stop the recording? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me do that. Stopping the recording. All right, stop.